Karen Berniston, the designer of the Pop It Ups line for Elizabeth Craft Designs, and today I am showing the Stage It Layering Stencil, number S014, the Candy Corn. The stencil is laid out in four vertical columns, and when you combine those together, you will get a finished border of about an inch and a quarter by six inches. And then if you actually want to make a whole background, we'll just repeat the process as many times as you need to to get a whole background. So I guess it doesn't really matter what order you do these in, but it makes sense to me to just go from left to right, which means I start with the base of the candy corn. So I've taped it off, and I'm going to use yellow with a blending tool. Typically on candy corn, the base of a candy corn is yellow. But if you were making Indian corn, then you would make this brown. You are, of course, not limited to ink. I could have used paint or spray or paste, you know, really anything that you would typically use through a stencil. So this creates the base of the candy corn. And the way layering stencils work is that you just slide it up, slide it to the next color, essentially. So now we've got a the middle part of the candy corn, and you can see right down through the stencil. So it's very easy to line these up right over the top of the bases. I'm still going to tape it off, but I can reuse some of my same tape pieces. And then I'm going to switch to orange. One of my favorite things about the Stage It stencils is how durable they are. And I can do a swirling motion with my ink, which really pushes the ink out to the edges of the openings. It gives me a really wonderful layered look here to my candy corn. Now, because I am working on white cardstock, I get to skip column number three. So that's one thing about this stencil is column number three is the white tips to the candy corn. I don't need them if I'm on white cardstock. They will be defined when I get the shadows on. Once again, I'm just sliding the stencil. I can see right down through it so I can see when I've got those shadows kind of around each of the candy corns. Once again, I'm a fan of taping this off before I do any of my inking. So if you were working on a colored cardstock, then you would do number three, column number three, which is the white tips. If you don't have like a white pigment ink for that, you could also use like a white gel pen and you can actually just go in and pen through the stencil to add the white tips. So that's completely up to you. If you're working on colored cardstock, it is a four part stencil. If you're working on white cardstock like I am today, it's just three parts. But there it is. The little gray shadows are what make the candy corn look like they're floating off the page. Now, if I repeat that, I could make an entire background like Kelly Booth did for this fun card, and then she die cut the Hanging Charm pull tab out of it and created this adorable Halloween card. If you use brown instead of yellow for the first column, you'll actually get Indian corn. And so here's another fun card by Kelly Booth. This one also uses Midnight the Bat. Now, when it's not near Halloween, but you still want to use this stencil, it does make a pretty cool confetti pattern. So you can just move it around and use different colors, make a fun confetti like I did for this little birthday card. For buying information, you can go to elizabethcraftdesigns.com, and you'll always find more ideas on my blog, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching.